In this video I'm going to do a bit of a mishmash of an LT230. Uh, the reason is there's, there's an awful lot of TD5s coming across here now into Canada and people are wanting you know put more power, bigger turbos, mapping the injectors, different injectors, all sorts of stuff that's going to be expensive later on but I'm saying nothing. But anyway, they're finding out that the 1.4 transfer case fitted originally is a bit too low so they're wanting something a little bit different. There is a source of 1.2 transfer cases available but there is a here in North America but there is a little bit of a problem. Um, you could find a Disco 1 and pop it in uh, if you're lucky because not a lot of them are around anymore. The one I've got down here is a Disco 1 but there's an awful lot of scrap Disco 2's in the scrapyard but there is a difference. And principally Disco 2's, some of them, well this gets really complicated, the early ones had a diff lock in them because I think they were still using the old mouldings and things like that from the uh, defenders and stuff, but they had the diff lock lever next to your gear shift only for the first year or so, hard to say. Then the next sort of year they still had the diff lock in the front of the housing uh, you know this bit this bit here all this garbage but didn't have a lever so you had to find a lever somewhere and they used to be really cheap now they're really expensive but also like a disco 2 oh so wait a minute so then then they went years and years without having a diff lock or a lever in and then on the last few they put the diff lock back in so it's a bit of hit and miss what you've got to get when you take a transfer case out. And the worst thing about the Disco 2 box is when we look down here there isn't a drilling for the speedo drive. Now I've had quite a few uh, Disco 2 boxes here and I went to JP to see if we could machine one in and he said it was too complicated. It wanted some measurements taken off this one onto like onto a CNC machine to find out where the center was so you could get it quite accurate it's just a sort of a blank casting with a dimple in it and like I say the, the measurements are worked off different places and it was going to be too complicated to do just on a setup on his milling machine so we didn't want to do that so if you're going to do a Disco 2 box into a TD5 You've really got to get hold of the kit, that, that um, cast in here and also make sure it's got the diff lock mechanism in here because if it isn't you're screwed. The Disco 2 relied on um, a traction control uh, for its four wheel drive management and of course the, the diff lock sort of became obsolete. Not that not that many people actually used diff lock. They didn't even know the bloody thing was there half the time. Most of the disco, well, I don't know why I'm whispering. Most of the disco ones I've had in here, all the linkages were all seized up because nobody knew what they did. Um, so I'm going to build this gearbox up here. This trans I keep calling it a gearbox, it's a transfer box. But I'm going to sort of make the ultimate box because I've been chatting with JP and some other people and this, that and the other. And we're working out a few modifications that we can do. Uh, along the way to make them last that, that little bit longer and be a bit more reliable. And one of the things I've sort of started to use now, instead of using the Loctite black silicone, I never use gaskets on them anyway so it doesn't really matter about that. I used to use an awful lot of this but I've started to, I, I like using this on engines, 300 TDI engines etc. This Loctite 5980, um, it seems to be quite quite good on engines. But on gearboxes it can be messy for cleanup. So I'm now using as recommended Hylamar 100 which is black. It's not Haircut 100 by the way, it's Hylamar 100. And I'll show you how easy it is to clean up and make them look uh, really smart because obviously you, you know, you've spent time on them and you want to get them looking right. And I'm going to show you how much Hylamar to put onto a joint. Oh and the, the nice thing about this is it's really thinner than the Loctite product, it's a lot thinner. All right, so they both have their uses, but these are on flat plates, so there's not you don't use so much if you see what I mean. 
So one of the reasons why I'm using it is that for cleanup. Now sometimes you get little bits of spurge coming out the side of the transfer out the joint, and it's so I put a little bit too much in there. But to get it off, I simply use a very thin screwdriver, run it round, then run it round the other way, and then you can take it off. Look, how neat is that? You see, it's all those little things, you know, that just just adds a little bit of uh, I don't know professionalism to, to to jobs, you know. And there you go. The red stuff on there is um, Loctite. Also, you can see here. All my transfer cases from now on, I've had a word with this with JP, all of them are going to get steel bushed. Uh, I'm not even going to take a risk on them. And also, as you can see here, JP put this in his grinder and ground down the end of it to take off any burrs and anything like this. So that when we put this shaft in here, when it goes in, when I find the, the hole there, when that goes in, it's a nice snug fit, Mr. Snug Fit. See what I mean? That's lovely as that. Uh, because what he's done is, even though he, he ground about a you know thousandth of an inch off there, what is half a point zero five of a millimeter or whatever, uh, he matched it up to the bush. So the bush is a nice, nice fit. Look at that, lovely. So, and it won't be affected by the o-ring. You can use a standard o-ring and it'll be fine. Now I did ask JP about making a lot of these bushes on CNC because there's, there's a shop who does my uh, clutch bushes. And they said, yeah, yeah, we can knock them out for you. And that's no problem at all. But JP seems to like to do, machine the housing out first and then make the bush to fit. So that's what it's going to be like. Now that's going to be like that from all my gearboxes onward, my transfer cases onwards. Um, also, as I'll mention in a video, I've mentioned in a video, but I'm all lost with where I'm putting things up now, but instead of using the collapsible spacer which I'm looking for, which I can't find, uh, usually we have the two bearings with the collapsible spacer. As you saw in the last video when we worked it out that the collapsible spacer isn't collapsing evenly, it's collapsing a bit cockeyed, it's ca causing the bearings to kick around a little bit. That's probably why Land Rover changed to a solid tube. So they're all going to have a solid uh, bushing. So they're going to have a bushing in here and the tube spacing is going to be solid. I wish I could find the damn thing. I, I thought, oh, they're all in the parts washer, that's where they are. You have seen them before. Anyway. So that's, that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this together. We're going to show you a few tips and tricks and things like this. But don't be afraid of doing them, they're really easy. Honestly, they're, they're really easy, but you've got to get things in the right order, if you see what I mean. So, when you've got your casing all nicely clean, it's come out your parts washer and it's really, really clean. I tap out all the holes, uh, and then I put them in the ultrasonic to make sure everything's out. It's already been through the wet bead blaster, and then I tap out the holes, um, make sure they're all clean, make sure all the casings clean, put the bushings in and I also put the bearing in here first now you, you, you just the bearing that goes from the rear output shaft all you have to do is put that in so it's around about half a millimeter lower than the surface because the casting for the back housing is sort of raised like this is here so when you put the when you put your rear housing on this piece will push the bearing into its proper place. That's kind of important. So you put that bearing race in, and there's a bearing race here inside for the, uh, the input shaft. Put that one in first, all together, and then we can do the housing. I just put that piece on just to you know, show you how to clean things up a little bit. But you can see this one's got some studs sticking out the end. Now, some of the... Some of the TD5s and things like this, they had a counterbalance weight on them. I'm not really sure why they did that, because they always shook anyway. 
Um, so let's put this on the stand. Let's understand the stand. Now, the stand I made was just to uh, make life a little bit easier to work on. Um, because th they are a bugger to keep supported. So let me put this on the stand if I can work it out which way. It This allows me now to put the pin in, in here, and it allows me to calculate the width of the, uh, the spacer required. Now, yeah, so that should be alright. Oh, that's it, it goes all the way through. I thought it went all the way through. So the next thing, what I'm going to do before I do the main gear, because again, all these years I've been doing this, I always change a little bit and a little bit here and a little bit there. I'm going to concentrate, first of all, on the spacer for here. Right, put the bearings in, put the spacer in, and calculate it. Whilst I can get both hands around the gear and work out the, uh, the preload on the bearings. Now, there are some fancy, dancy types of things in the workshop manual. But the, nothing replaces these little things to get that feeling on a bearing. You know, if it's too loose and banging about, it's going to cause noise, it's going to cause knocking and things like this. But you don't want them too tight because it'll burn the bearing out. Alright, so let's get on with that. You can see here one of another many uses of my dismantling tool available in the shop uh, to support everything instead of using the tube to dismantle it now it's now it's on its vertical plane I just put the uh, the dismantling tool because it's thin under the bearing and then just slid everything in place so that's going to be really nice so now we should be able to put the I've got the solid tube in here that came out of this box so now we'll just sort of assemble everything, we'll wrap it all together like they did in Land Rover. There we go. Now notice I'm doing this without any um, safety net or anything like that, and I'm also doing it with no rubber o rings on. There we go. Now, now this has got no oil on or anything. Oh, notice too. The teeth are extremely fine cut on these uh, LT230s, the, the 1.211, uh, different cut of the gears. Also, you can actually take the diff out without any real problems because uh, it seems to come out, but there's not many people use that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to obtain a nut, which I saw yesterday, when I sort of lost it. I've been moving things around, I can't find anything. I'm going to put a nut on, we're going to tighten it down and uh, see what the play's like. Now remember, I didn't put any oil in this. Alright, there's no oil on the bearings, there's nothing. So I'm just going to tip it a little bit, put the gun underneath. Now there's no set torque, I don't, I've never found a torque. So that's not, it's maybe in a fuma book or something like that, but I've never found a torque. But we don't have to use a crush sleeve because it's a solid bearing. You see what I mean? It's not going anywhere. If it was a crush sleeve, we have to go very uh, gently with a power bar and make sure that this, it crushes until just the right point. Whereas this one, we've kept the tube that came out with the bearings. They are beautiful. They are beautiful. There's no lift on that whatsoever so now we take it out again don't forget to put the um, the keeper sleeve in the the little ring we'll, well I'll show you it in a minute but you've got to put the ring in so we're going to take this out again and the next thing we're going to do is it raining again God, we had some rain we're going to assemble the uh, input gear and then we're going to check for the clearance of the input gear because then we can take this out Flip it round the other way and check that gear. What a mess about, but it's worth it. <laughs> 